Um, welcome to today's class. Today we are going to continue our study of the upper half plane model of the hyperbolic plane. So uh, remember what we have done for the upper half plane so far. Uh, so we pulled the Riemannian metric that we had already put on the unit disk to the upper half plane. Right? The, the, the Riemannian metric we had put on the disk came uh, in turn from the uh, hyperboloid, right? So we first pulled it from the hyperboloid to the unit disk and then from the unit disk to the upper half plane uh, using the, um, the Cayley transformation. Uh, then uh, we stated a theorem whose proof I left as, as an exercise uh, that gave an expression, an explicit expression for this Riemannian metric on the upper on the upper half plane, um, in terms of for for every point z in u, right? And then we saw that uh, if if um, at each point z of u, uh, the the inner product uh, evaluated at, at a pair of vectors uh, u comma v was uh, the usual. Uh, uh, dot product between uh, u and v divided by the square of the imaginary part of z. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, we um, established what are the shortest curves in, uh, in the upper half plane right, for this Riemannian metric. Right? And then we, um, we showed that uh, the shortest curves are precisely the segments of the, of the circles in C bar uh, that are orthogonal to R bar mm -hmm. and of course contained in U, right? So, so, so to obtain, we proved that to obtain all shortest curves, uh, um, we only need to consider the circles in C bar orthogonal to R bar and uh, intersect these circles with U. So only take, take the part of these circles that, uh, that, uh, are, uh, that are contained in, in U uh, and then just take segments of these of this semicircles, right? Um, so those are the shortest curves, uh, kind of a very nice conceptual description. Um, and now remembering that, that we defined a circles in C bar uh, to be either uh, uh, circle the, the, the usual, our usual uh, circles in C and sets of the form uh, straight line union infinity. Uh, so what we obtain in terms of, uh, of of these two types of circles in C bar is well uh, the usual uh, circles in in C that are orthogonal to R bar mm -hmm. uh, and, and the straight lines that are vertical, right? Because that's the only way a straight, a straight line can be orthogonal to R bar, right? Um, if you want an union infinity, but then afterwards we, we, we only take the part of that vertical line that uh, lies within, uh, within um, U, right? Okay, uh, and uh, uh, one of the important points to prove uh, that these are precisely the shortest curves in U uh, was a somewhat technical uh, result where we proved that uh, for any two points in U there always is a modus transformation in, uh, in PSL2R that uh, takes one of the points to the point i, right, and the other point uh, in the uh, takes it to the uh, positive part of the imaginary axis, and actually we can put it uh, uh, above i. Right? Uh, we will need this result uh, again in this class. Mm -hmm. uh, remember that I'm uh, I'm um, identifying PSL2R with uh, the set of all um, Mobius transformations 
uh, of C bar that preserve uh, you bijectively. Right? And I'm, uh, I, I uh, make this identification uh, justified in the theorem that we proved uh, that says that for any matrix in uh, SL2Z, uh, so SL2 of the complex numbers, uh, it is equivalent for its associated Mobius transformation uh, to preserve the upper half plane bijectively uh, and for the matrix itself to belong to SL2R, right? So, uh, uh, and, and, then, and, then, uh, and then we realize that for matrices in SL2R, um, they induce uh, the same Mobius transformation uh, if and only if uh, they have the same, uh, the same equivalence class in PSL2R. So, so that's the, my justification to, for, for identifying PSL2R um, with the set of, with a group of Mobius transformations um, that preserve uh, U bijectively. Okay, and so, so uh, in the case of the hyperboloid, uh, we found a very beautiful formula. Uh, relating the, the hyperbolic cosine of the distance between two points with the value of the Minkowski form uh, at those points. Uh, in this class now we want to find a similar formula for, for uh, the distance in, uh, in the upper half plane and um, maybe involving the, 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 the cosine right so that so that uh, uh, we can perhaps uh, compute this distance explicitly or at least it's uh, hyperbolic cosine um, in order to do that i need a, a somewhat technical lemma uh, which says that certain function is invariant on the uh, the action of the mobius transformations that preserve you bijectively right on their psl2r namely the function that goes from u cross u to the complex numbers that to each pair of complex numbers associates uh, uh, the square of the usual Euclidean norm divided by two times the product of their, imag their imaginary parts. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by, uh, by being invariant? What I mean is that uh, let's call this function f. Mm -hmm. So what I mean is that uh, f of uh, nu w nu z is equal to f of w z for every pair uh, w comma z in uh, u cross u mm -hmm. and for every Mobius transformation in PSL2R. Okay, so that's what I mean that it's invariant, that, that uh, the value of the function doesn't change if to the arguments I apply uh, one of these Mobius transformations. Mm -hmm. um, this, the, the proof I'm going to leave as an exercise. Uh, for the proof, I think a good hint is to remember that the relation between the imaginary part of nu of z uh, and the imaginary part of uh, Z, which uh, we uh, established um, last class. Right? So this was uh, this divided by, if I'm not mistaken, uh, gamma Z plus delta uh, uh, norm square. Mm -hmm. So I think using that that hint that that result from last class, uh, this lemma becomes an, an easy computation. Um, okay, so so why how do how does one come up with this with this function being invariant? Don't don't quite ask me. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and now let's prove let's prove uh, this formula. So um, perhaps this formula doesn't look as spectacular as uh, the formula in the in the hyperboloid, but it's still 
a, uh, a formula, right? And it's still it's still useful, right? Because it's kind of it says the cosine, the hyperbolic cosine of this uh, kind of um, mysterious distance uh, can be uh, computed explicitly. And actually, the, the the expression I would say is quite uh, quite uh, simple minded. Right? Um, and it's look, it's 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 purely in terms what what it, what kind of what, what it's kind of uh, a bit striking is that this is all Euclidean information, right? I mean, uh, this norm is, is is the norm, the Euclidean norm in in um, in, it's in in C, if you want, uh, yeah. So um, w w that I find that a, li a bit a bit uh, striking, you know, that there is that relation between this hyperbolic and you know that that something like hyperbolic can be can be fully put in terms of this which is kind of all all of whose small pieces are uh, euclidean but okay uh, let's prove it uh -huh. uh, uh, using this lemma mm -hmm. the th the thing is look w once you see the formula you you see that here that 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 this that that this this the expression on the right uh, is is invariant on the on the reaction of of the Mobius transformations in PSL two R right because this part is precisely this, this function right and of course one is of course invariant right and they're applying PSL two R to the arguments um, <coughs> okay uh, this one. This expression is also invariant under uh, the uh, the action of the elements in PSL 2R because we already saw that that the elements here uh, act act as Riemannian isometries of U, right? So, being Riemannian isometries, they preserve the distance, um, and so and, and so this, this 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 turns out then to be uh, also invariant. And the fact that both sides, each of the, these two sides, is invariant on their, uh, on their all elements of PSL 2R tells me that, um, that, that, that maybe, maybe it suffices to, to show this equality in some easy cases, right? Uh, especially, for instance, if uh, like uh, given any, any, per, any two pairs of points, let's say W0, Z0, W1, Z1, look like, for instance, if there were always an element of PSL2R sending this order uh, pair to this ordered pair, then we would be done, right? Now, of course, of course, that, that, that this, what I just said, is not true, right? Because the distance between W0 and Z0, uh, and Z0 may, may be not equal to the distance between uh, W1 and Z1, right? Um, okay, but maybe, uh, you know, uh, um, we can still find some easy cases, right? And the easy cases where one has certain freedom is when one takes, you know, one of the points to be I and the other point to be, to be lambda I uh, but you see, you see above above i, right? Because with uh, with lambda greater or equal than one, right? So, so somehow here is the positive part of the of the imaginary axis. Here is i, and then lambda i is, is somewhere above, mm -hmm. um, right? And then and then here is where I put certain freedom, so that uh, so that um, and maybe I can take w z to i, and then. And then to some to some lambda times i, right? Anyway, uh, so let's compute uh, this this hyperbolic cosine mm -hmm. is well this 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 distance we had already um, um, uh, uh, computed, uh, and we saw that it was this natural logarithm, natural logarithm of lambda minus natural logarithm of one. Which is the coefficient that accompanies i, but that natural logarithm is zero. Uh -huh. Okay, and then of course this hyperbolic cosine we express it in terms of the of the exponential, right? That that was a theorem. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this is well exponential cancels, and then here you see it's one divided by lambda, right? I mean it's uh, um, yeah. Okay, so, so so I mean because this is. One divided by e to the minus natural logarithm of lambda, 
Um, sorry, not, not minus, but plus. Anyway, so, so this is one over lambda. Uh, okay, uh, this, this well, we take lambda as part of the common denominator, right? So, so when it comes out here, here uh, it becomes square. Okay. Uh, and then somehow you see we start we start kind of going back to what we want, right? So this one I see that that that, that you see that there's kind of a, a plus one missing outside, if you will, because this one is already two times the imaginary part of this times the imaginary part of i, which is one. Mm -hmm. So for that somehow it's somehow it's like I add it uh -huh, and I subtract it, but I subtract it inside this, so I, I have to subtract uh, 2 lambda, so I get this, uh -huh. and then then I realize, look, the part on the bottom, uh, we, we are in the denominator, we, we, I, I just said it, right, it's 2 times those imaginary, the product of those imaginary parts, and on top, what I have is precisely the square of the norm uh, of lambda i minus i. Okay, so which means that the theorem is uh, true in the in this very specific case, right? Where when W is uh, lambda i and Z is i. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but remember that last class uh, we showed that it is, it is given given two points. It is always possible to put one of them at i and the other one at at at, uh, at, at the positive side of the of the imaginary um, uh, axis. Uh -huh. if, 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 if it were uh, below, then, then I applied the same trick I applied last time, so it's a rotation in the disk and then bring it back, right? So, so it's, it's above I. Uh -huh. And then I'm done, right? As I said, because this is invariant, both sides are invariant on the, do not change when instead of lambda I and instead of I, I write, um, uh, let's say new inverse of lambda i and new inverse of i, and I'm done, right? Um, okay, and now here, of course, lambda i. Well, I mean, here maybe I would have to just kind of to be completely consistent. Although it, it's there's there's really no problem because the distance is symmetric, obviously, right? But let's say, okay. Um, so this proves this uh, this theorem, this formula. Mm -hmm. um, in okay, uh, okay. I mean, uh, uh, in particular, for instance, these ones we can we can w and z we can push them to the disk using the Cayley transformation, and then uh, from the disk we can push them to the to the hyperboloid, right? And in the hyperboloid, after pu uh, pushing, push, since since, uh, since the hyperbolic metrics in the disk and in, in, in the upper half plane were defined by pulling the, the Riemannian metric on the hyperboloid, uh, the functions, the, the, the stereographic projection from the disk to the, to, to the hyperboloid, and the Cayley transformation, they are both Riemannian isometries, right? And that's obvious, um, and so 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 when I push to d and then to to m, uh, this distance doesn't change, right? And what I obtain is that this is equal to this, which then is equal to uh, to minus the Minkowski pairing of the points in the hyperboloid that correspond to w and z, right? So. So this gives the, so as a corollary, I can write certain um, uh, certain e equality, right? Which um, yeah, maybe I, I will leave you as an exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, next thing: uh, how do uh, circles and and uh, and balls uh, discs? Open discs or open balls uh, 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 look like in in uh, in U in the upper half plane. Um, like for instance, take a circle in the upper half plane. Uh, how does it look like? I mean, is it is it a circle in, in the Euclidean sense? 
uh, does it make sense to expect that? Uh, uh, hopefully, like a uh, like a positive answer would be nice because then 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 uh, then then one wouldn't need to introduce kind of maybe some other strange shapes. Um, okay, now um, for for, uh, for to study that I need some notation, mm -hmm. and uh, the notation is this one. Uh, so given a point in U and uh, uh, you know a radius, um, the circle with with that center and that radius. Um, in the Euclidean sense, I denote it like this. So this is this is simply the Euclidean circle center that's at zero with radius r zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas the hyperbolic circle, so 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 the one defined with res defined with respect to the hyperbolic distance, uh, well I denote it but uh, with an h. Mm -hmm. So it's the it's the, the 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 circle. Of course in u. Because the the, the the space that has the Riemannian metric is U, and mm -hmm. um, the points in U that that uh, whose distance to Z zero is precisely R zero. Right. Um, to begin with, we don't know, like for instance, a, pri a priori, we don't even know that whether whether you see when you fix when you fix your point and you fix your radius whether this set is empty or not right uh, we uh, we a priori don't don't quite know right a priori it could be that for some of them this one is empty for them for some for some of, for some of, of, of the input information it is not empty that the a priori that these curves could be very strange it could be a single point whatever right um okay and our theorem says that all of this that I just said, all these strange situations that I just described, do not happen. Right? Namely, uh, whenever you take a point in uh, in U and take any radius you want, uh -huh, and then you want to see how the hyperbolic circle with that center and that radius looks like, uh, well, it, uh, it's actually equal to an Euclidean uh, circle, but of, with a different center. Right? The center, the Euclidean center, is not the same as the uh, hyperbolic center, and the Euclidean radius is not the same as the hyperbolic radius. Right? This, this should be expected that uh, that I that at least one of the that like at, at least one of the Euclidean pieces of data is not equal to one of the hyperbolic pieces of data, right? Because other, excuse me, because otherwise. Um, it would look like the Euclidean, like the Euclidean metric, it looks like the exactly like the hyperbolic metric, right? So, there, there, there one should expect at least a change in, in here, right? And what we see is that in both of them there is there is some uh, variation with respect to this. Okay, um, and of course, of course, this has as a consequence what. Well, first of all, that every circle, every hyperbolic circle, is an Euclidean circle. Mm -hmm. uh, and second, the hyperbolic circles are precisely the Euclidean circles that are already contained in U. Um, so, for instance, uh, so draw the x-axis, draw draw R bar, mm -hmm. and so so for instance. Uh, Something like this would be a circle, but in in U. But something like this wouldn't be a circle in U, right? In particular, the shortest curves, which are kind of this where you have here orthogonal, they are not circles in U. Mm -hmm. So that's that's not to be confused. Okay, so let's prove this one. Right? Uh, notice that here when I say equality. Since in the definition of this one, I put all those z's in u such that blah blah blah, and in the definition of the other one, I say I say all the z's in z such that blah blah blah. I am in particular uh, asserting that uh, that this one is entirely contained in u. Right? 
right? Because all the z, I'm, I'm saying all the z's in z such that blah 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 for for with respect to this center and this Euclidean center and this Euclidean radius, they are in particular here. So they are points in u such that blah blah blah. So so that's part of the of, of that's one of the things that I have to prove at some point. So let's let's see. First, uh, well, we notice that you see the, the hyperbolic cosine. Well, here's the formula, right? And it's of course greater always than uh, than this one, right? um, because from this number here I'm extracting something positive always. In other words, hyperbolic cosine is always greater than hyperbolic sine. Mm -hmm. But now also we are taking hyperbolic signs of, you see, of positive numbers, positive numbers. So, so, so the hyperbolic sign of positive numbers of a positive number is always greater than zero. And here is the the reasoning. Uh, for this to be greater than zero, what I need is this to be greater than zero, which is here. Mm -hmm. But this is greater than zero. If and only if, well, of course, this happens because I just pass this to the right. Mm -hmm. If and only if this happens because then I pass this multi multiply. Right? So to show this, all I need to show is that this is, that is this that this inequality holds for all positive R not. Right? Um, but for positive R not, this is this is this is this is obvious, right? Because two R two R not then is is positive, right? And um, and the exponential is uh, increasing. So okay, so this is indeed the case. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then let's multiply with y not. Let's multiply this inequality with y not. Mm -hmm. When we multiply, what I mean, y not. You see, z not is in u, so its imaginary part is positive because it belongs to the upper half plane. Mm -hmm. So so. Uh, and inequalities get preserved when multiplying by y not. Okay, so I obtain this. Uh -huh. uh, and what this mean, what this implies is notice. This implies that um, that kind of the height, the elevation of the Euclidean center in the in this circle mm -hmm. uh, is bigger than this radius. Right, so this this is saying that that um, when you when you take that Euclidean circle, actually, sorry, actually, at the end when you look at the at the center, uh -huh, it's, it 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 it's, um, it is farther away from uh, from the x-axis than the radius. Well, this is the radius, and this this implies that this one is contained in you. Okay, um, so the reason why is this is contained in U in the end is simply that um, uh, that cosine is always greater than than sine. That hyperbolic cosine is always greater than hyperbolic cosine for positive R zero. Um, okay, uh, now uh, hyperbolic cosine is injective on the positive numbers. We we we, we know that. Uh -huh. um, and so, so, so when we, you know, this of so this circle, uh, which is the set of all z's such that this is satisfied, well, I mean, this is satisfied since since this is positive and this is positive, this equality is satisfied if and only if uh, the, the 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 hyperbolic cosine of this is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of this by this injectivity. Okay, so so we can describe this hyperbolic circle this way. Um, okay, which kind of it may look kind of um, I mean a priori it looks like I'm just overcomplicating life, right? But the thing is, I have a formula for this one, right? and my for and the formula is is uh, the the theorem I proved here. So I uh, I substitute, right? I substitute, uh -huh. and then I start uh, developing. I start uh, expanding, if you will. Um, so this one, how do I write it? Well, I write I write z as uh, 
you know, z is x plus yi with, re with real uh, x and y. Mm -hmm. So this square norm is, of course, equal to this, right? Uh, and this, this two times this, this uh, imaginary parts uh, uh, becomes this. Mm -hmm. And then this one, well, when I, put, when I put this one as a common denominator, this one becomes this 2yy0. Y, Okay, and then uh, this 2yy0, it cancels with a minus 2yy0 in this square. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, no, and, and that cancels, and this one can be moved to the other side. Um, because, uh, the, because y and y0 are positive. Mm -hmm. I mean, y0 is positive because I took it that way, but here also it's the set of all sets in U, that blah, blah, blah. So. So, so it's the set of all z that in particular have y, the, it's the, the, the imaginary part positive. Okay, uh, and then when I reach this point, when I reach this point, uh, I notice that if I, <coughs> if I pass this one um, uh, uh, to the other side, uh, you see I have, I have this, I mean, um, how to say, uh, Yeah, so I have y naught square, and you see, and mine, and then I would have two, mi, mi, you know, two mi, minus two y y naught. Um, yeah, so so okay, so 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 my point is that that uh, here uh, this the one here in y naught, I'm going to substitute it with this one, right? So I'm expressing one in this way. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, and so 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 when I do that, uh, when I do that, uh, somehow you see I can I can pass this to the left, and and, and complete a square. Mm -hmm. um, because I have y square and then minus this, plus y not square cosine a hyperbolic cosine square, right? So I have this square. Mm -hmm. And then this sign, this hyperbolic sign, I can move it to the right. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is uh, why did I do that? Because somehow I was looking for the shape of a, of a circle, right? And here I already have part of that shape. Uh -huh. And and the other the other part would, would, would be y square, sorry, y minus something else square. And that minus something, the something. Is suggested by this by passing this to the left, right? Uh, and passing that to the left is what suggests me to 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 to, to write instead of one, write this, you know, which is equal to one. Okay, and then once I'm there, I'm done, right? Because this is the set of all uh, x comma y, uh -huh, such that, well, of course in U, but such that um, x minus something square plus y minus something square is equal to this positive number. Um, so it's the elements of u that are in this circle. Right? That's the notation I, uh, I said, because he, from here I can extract, extract this uh, center and, and this radius. Uh -huh. I know that this is positive. Uh, so I mean, I know that this is positive, and so when I you know, when I take the positive square root uh, with y not I, I didn't have any problem, but with sine, with the sine, I know it's positive. Here it is. Okay, but but uh, but I, I I also had already shown that this one is was already contained in U, so this intersection is just it's just the smaller set. Okay, and then I'm done, right? So this circle, this hyperbolic circle, is this Euclidean circle. Mm -hmm. As a corollary, uh, also it's also for balls, right? Like for open balls, right? So, so if the open ball, if the hyperbolic open ball center that set not um, and with radius are not, uh, is denoted like this, mm -hmm. uh, and same and this kind of similar notation, but but for the Euclidean ball, I mean the Euclidean open disk, right, with this center and uh, this radius, well, working, you know, working uh, 
radius by radius, right? I mean, kind of, you know, like let, let's say consider this one, right? So that one is is, is a is a ball, uh -huh. but but that ball, the the the, 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 the interior is kind of uh, is uh, is is equal to the union of all the disks, right? For all the intermediate radius from between zero and uh, and, and, the, and the radius here, right? And for for each one of those, I I have cer I have a certain equality of circles, right? So kind of I work circle by circle and to show uh, that these two are equal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so it's quite nice. Uh, the circles, the hyperbolic circles, are precisely the circles in uh, in, in C bar contained entirely in U. Mm -hmm. And similarly with the with the open balls or with the open discs, uh -huh. and then just just uh, to to finish for today to finish today's class, uh, let's see. So you see, there's a change when when you know when con here sorry when here when considering uh, the hyperbolic circle of of the of the center and radius I'm interested in. Uh, I really have have to draw an Euclidean circle with a certain uh, center and certain certain radius, neither of which is equal to either of these. Right. So, um, so how does how do things look like? Um, well, uh, you see. So first of all, uh, this cosine is, is this hyperbolic cosine is, is something of the form lambda plus one over lambda, right? Where this is always greater than one because R not is positive. Mm -hmm. So and we already saw that, that this one was then greater than two. So this is always greater than one for R not positive. Right? I mean for for R not equal to one, this is equal, right? But I, but R not I'm taking it to be a non-trivial radius. Mm -hmm. And so when I multiply with Y not, I obtain this inequality, and this tells me that at least I know that. Uh, the Euclidean, you see, the Euclidean uh, center uh -huh, is above, lies, lies, you know, vertically aligned with the with the with the hyperbolic center, because they have the same real part, uh -huh, but it lies it, it lies above. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so so I know that the Euclidean center lies above the the hyperbolic center, right? And then, well, the, ra the Euclidean radius, yeah, kind of I draw it, right? And then, and then I draw the Euclidean radius. Mm -hmm. uh, what else can I see from this? Well, um, something I can see is that when, uh, you see, when I, when I let, um, let's say, let's say that I say, okay, the, 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 um, the Euclid, the, the hyperbolic center. I'm going to keep it fixed, and I'm going to move uh, the, the 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 hyperbolic radius, and I'm going to let it let it increase, right? And then, in particular, since since kind of since, since the cosine is given in terms of these exponentials, mm -hmm. somehow this this means that kind of this 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 blows like far away, right? Like kind of kind of this this when when R not increases. Even when it increases as, as, just a little bit, since this since this expression is actually like exponential, uh, the 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 Euclidean size of the of the circle really explodes, right? and the Euclidean center really kind of moves very very quickly, very far away. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, like like for instance, like if one just takes the, you know, the, let's say R not, and then you, you just take uh, the 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 uh, the uh, hyperbolic circle centered here, but with radius two times R not. So it's something like it's some it would be something like, oops, something like here in between. All right, but something like that. Um, Okay, I mean this, this 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 is kind of to have a, a little bit of intuition of you know what's the relation between uh, the Euclidean and the hyperbolic information associated to one of these curves. Right? As a curves, they are the same. 
as, as, as sets. Okay, so let's see um, some, some animated examples. Uh, so, so one, one, one uh, thing I would like you to see is, is you know, like a, um, it's something similar to, to what I just said. So, so let's say that you, you take a point uh, and you are going to fix it as your center of, uh, of, the, of your hyperbolic uh, circles. Uh -huh. And that then you say, okay, then then it's kind of kind of a, then a, it's something like a, you are kind of in a pond of water, right? But can, but kind of with a hyperbolic surface. Uh, I mean, kind of that the surface is, the, is is you, right? It's hyperbolic and really lives in a hyperbolic world. And then you drop a, 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 you drop from above a, a small uh, a stone, right? So that so that it hits and it hits in a in kind of in a center. In the center of some, of some, I mean, the, in a, at a point which is going to be the center of certain waves that will open in the circle shapes, right? So let's see how that would look like. Okay, so let's say that here is the point where my uh, uh, kind of where my stone hits when somehow that I'm, I'm seeing th I'm seeing this from above somehow, right? Um, okay, and then w I'm going to do it. You know, in, in by choosing a, 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 um, an initial tangent velocity, mm -hmm. an initial velocity, an initial tangent vector with norm. Uh -huh. Okay, so for things not to be too fast, I'm going to do it here, and then I click. Right, and that's how the circles open. Right. You see, and that's what I mean. That's what I meant a, mom so a few moments ago when I was still on the iPad. Um, that you see that even here, here, here it's, I mean, I'm not very far, right? I mean, here it's kind of, uh, I'm kind of in norm still, kind of a very short, very short norm. And things already go far away very quickly, right? I mean, and by far away, I mean the Euclidean center really goes far away very quickly. Okay, now um, another thing I want to illustrate is how circular motion uh, looks like, right? So, uh, so we are kind of we are very used to, like, for instance, thinking about a let's say a, let's say a bicycle that goes at a constant rapidity, right, on the street. Uh, and so, so what the what then you know if I'm moving together with the with the with the bike and. Uh, and, and see, uh, see uh, look at one of the uh, of the tires, right? Um, uh, what I what I see since since the since the uh, bike is in um, in constant rapidity, what I see is this uh, angu um, constant angular speed of the tire, right? Um, okay, so how would that look like in in uh, in the hyperbolic uh, world, right? So let's see it. Mm -hmm. So so I'm going to fix certain uh, certain hyperbolic radius, certain angular speed, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to 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 click at the point which which is kind of the center of the tire, right? So the center of the circle, but it's the hyperbolic center. Mm -hmm. And then let's start this. Uh, a motion with um, constant al angular uh, velocity. So one of the things to notice is uh, is this uh, sort of visual phenomenon that that I pointed out last time, which is that when uh, when kind of when this particle gets far away from uh, from R bar. From the x-axis, uh, things s seem to Euclideanly move faster, whereas uh, when when it gets closer to our bar, and by closer I mean Euclideanly closer, right? Um, th things seem to move Euclideanly uh, in slow, uh, uh, slower, right? And this is. This is this is kind of because because here here it seems that it's slower, but the point is that the formula for the for the for the norm of the velocity 
uh, since since it since it, 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 it's the, the 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 usual dot product divided by one over the, the the imaginary part square, that that velocity vector is actually hyperbolically very long, which means that hyperbolically it's actually um, traversing um, a, a lot of distance. Right? So, so that's why. Yes, yeah, sorry, that, that, that should be some some error in my programming, um, in my code. Uh, so that's why here it looks lower, but the, the point is that those, those, those little segments, they are actually very long because their tangent vectors are very long. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is why you can see that, right? Um, okay, so, so later on, I think, I think uh, tomorrow uh, in our, in our uh, um, you know, when, when we meet in Zoom, um, uh, I think I'm going to maybe maybe uh, 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 draw, you know, this, the ra the the radi radii, so that so that you can see not only this kind of particle moving, but also the the um, the radius that connects it to the center also moving, mm -hmm. and so that you can see after tomorrow when I zoom in, uh, so that you can see that it's actually the same angle. Like uh, you know, when I zoom in, when I zoom in. Uh, th things start looking like a, a lot more Euclidean-like, and very when he, I'm very close, things should look like as if it were just the, the Euclidean. I mean that it's the same angle, right? The kind of if you just were kind of a very big Euclidean uh, tire, let's say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's leave that for today. So tomorrow we will do that, and then afterwards uh, I'm going to go on to studying. Um, the full isometry group of U. Uh -huh. And then I'm finally going to be able to prove an equality between, uh, um, between um, the full group of uh, isometries of, um, um, of U, uh -huh, of Riemannian isometries of U, uh, and certain extension of, uh, of uh, PSL2R. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm finally going to be able to. I'm, 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 final, I'm, I'm I am going to finally manage to do what uh, I couldn't manage to do in the in the case of the hyperboloid, which was to prove that we, I had equalities in, over there, right? So I, in this model, I'm going to be able to do it, uh -huh. and then later on, I'm going to go back to the hyperboloid and see. Okay, say okay. So now I have a quality here.